feature. This is a feature of Microsoft 365, which is the yearly subscription. So it's all online. Uh, and so this is in PowerPoint. <clears throat> they call it subtitles. The other thing, there's a benefit to getting that program. In Microsoft Word, they have a new feature called Dictate. Basically, I can use my microphone. And what I do is when I have letters or anything I need transcribed, I don't type it anymore. I just actually speak it into uh, the microphone. I would say it's about 80% accurate, uh, but it's really a neat new feature in terms of accessibility. So, uh, so those are there and they'll be only on the PowerPoint slides. Uh, so we're here for the 15 Habits of Highly Frugal Genealogists. Uh, my name is Thomas McKenty. I am in Chicago where many are cold, but few are frozen. Uh, yeah, there'll be a lot of jokes tonight. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> originally I'm actually from the Catskills. I was born in Sullivan County. Uh, and I've been doing genealogy, believe it or not, for 44 years. I know, it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, I will be 59 this December. So I remember I was 14 years old, staying with my great grandparents in Gramesville, New York. And we were watching the miniseries Roots in February of 1977. And that's when I got hooked. Uh, <clears throat> because then when the show was over each night, I would ask questions. Uh, found out that most of my heritage is New York Dutch, Schenectady, Albany, 1641. On my mother's side, the English heritage is uh, 1628 in Rhode Island, the Crandalls and the Austins. And my latest passion has been researching my French Huguenot uh, side of my dad's. And uh, those were the Protestants thrown out of Catholic France. Uh, my ninth great grandfather, Hugo Freer, arrived in New Paltz in 1675. And believe it or not, his stone house built in 1699 is still standing there. And it always freaks me out when I go home and visit. Uh, so just to put it in perspective, I started out before the IBM PC, pencil, pen and paper, uh, sound decks, microfilm, and then gradually went into, I remember Family Tree Maker, my first software from Burger Bun Software, uh, using a Hayes modem 300 baud to connect with bulletin boards and connect with other genealogists, uh, AOL, Prodigy, all of that. Uh, in 2008, I was laid off during the Great Recession. I was uh, doing information technology work. And I knew that those jobs were not coming back for guys in their mid 40s like me. So I followed my passion and reinvented myself. And here I am. Uh, this is my 195th webinar of the year. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I absolutely love teaching. So this is something I developed this class because I know that genealogy can get very expensive especially if you're on a fixed income. So we're gonna cover the ways that you can save money. A little bit about the handout, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that a little bit more, one more time for anyone who's late coming in. It's in the chat, it's a downloadable PDF. And uh, let's go here and make sure that everyone gets it. Great, perfect. Uh, the thing is you are free to share that with anyone you want. Uh, any other genealogist, I just ask that you keep it as it is with my copyright statement. Uh, <clears throat> I don't exercise a lot of ownership over my content. I'm more of a steward for that information. I'd rather see it shared. Uh, so I appreciate that. Also, if you know of any genealogy society that's looking for newsletter content, uh, I can send them an article format of the handout of any of my handouts. Uh, just have them contact me. My email address is at the top of the handout, and I'll also show it at the end of uh, the presentation. <clears throat> so I often get asked this, why, ge why isn't genealogy free? Uh, why are these documents, why do I have to go through Ancestry and pay to access them? Uh, a myriad of questions, uh, and I have followed the genealogy industry, I actually do market research, uh, and I know why. Uh, the argument is, oh, they're public domain records, so I shouldn't have to pay, I should not have to pay for them. And that is true. You can go down to National Archives or the regional ones, and you go there and look them up, or you can request them. But what you're paying for really is the convenience of uh, accessing those at home. You know, 10 p.m., Bailey's and Hot Cocoa, 
your pajamas, and you're going to go on a research vendor for four hours. Uh, yeah, you can't just pop into NARA or an archive or a library. Also, think about the cost to scan, digitize, transcribe, and index those records. Uh, case in point, April 1st, 2022, a date you should put down. That is when National Archives releases the 1950 census data. So NARA has already microfilmed those. They are sitting on Amazon web servers, uh, but guess what? There's no index. Ancestry will have to use its uh, third-party service to index. Family Search, we use volunteers, but that's what I'm talking about. Just because the record exists, uh, you have to do all these things to make it usable, especially in an online environment. And transcribing, I, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Not all of it can be animated, uh, automated to do that way. So that's part of what the price is. Also, think about the cost of traveling to that repository. I do a lot of work with uh, German archives. I'm always searching for my Hennebergs on my mother's side. And the thing is, I could not afford to go and get these records. It's even expensive to hire a professional genealogist in Germany to pull them for me. So there are all these costs that go into uh, figuring out uh, that really subscription sites are a bargain. Now, true confession, do you uh, tell your husband or wife or partner uh, actually how much money you spend on genealogy every year? I actually fudge. I say, oh no, I just spend like $200 on su subscription services and Meanwhile, I'm saying, oh, Ancestry, Fold3, Newspapers.com, MyHeritage, all of these services. If you could mute yourself, please, whoever joined. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. And so, you know, the thing is, yeah, I probably spend about $1,000 a year for all these different subscription sites. Uh, it is an investment. It's not cheap. Uh, so this is why I developed the base 15 habits. Uh, originally, this talk was named the seven habits, but I realized that the Stephen Covey family uh, owns the copyright to that phrase, the seven habits. Uh, it was seven habits of highly successful individuals, I think, or something like that. Very popular book. So we have 15 habits that we're going to cover. Uh, you can select which ones you want to use. Uh, but this is the first one. Uh, if you do not have a subscription to Ancestry or any of the sites, very often you'll get free access around a holiday. An example, in February, it's Black History Month. It's also Valentine's Day, so you might see free marriage records on my heritage. Uh, March is, uh, with St. Patrick's, it's Irish American Heritage Month. Uh, and also March is Women's History Month, so you may see stuff related to female ancestors. Uh, in April, DNA Day is the big one, April 25th, but that's what you need to think of. May would be Memorial Day, uh, and you'll see military records. In fact, I'm gonna show you a screen right here, Let's see if I can find it, and there it is. Uh, this was a post that I did on my site, Genealogy Bargains, back in last May, 2020. For Memorial Day weekend, full three, usually uh, makes uh, some set of their documents free. Now, what do I mean by this? You will need to create a free account. That's a base. I mean, if they're gonna allow you to access them, they want your email, et cetera. And the thing is you can search, you can save the images to your computer. Basically you can do anything you want. Uh, and so look for those types of deals. Uh, the other thing is that June, June, it's a mix. Uh, it's Father's Day, it's graduation. Uh, and then by July, uh, July 4th, Bull 3 had American Revolution records available this year. Some years they had US Civil War records. Uh, August is kind of a dead month, although towards the end, you'll see Ancestry and My Heritage make yearbook records available because it's the whole back to school. Uh, September, there really wasn't much. Uh, October is uh, Family History Month, and uh, you may see some free records. And then finally, November, Veterans Day, we'll see military records again. And I will guarantee you after that, uh, through to early mid-January, 
you will not see free access because that is the busiest time for genealogy. People are getting ready for Thanksgiving here in the US, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, they're, they're with family. And it's natural to go out and use ancestry in other sites. So what I do is this, if I don't have a subscription to a certain site, I create a spreadsheet. And I basically say, this is who I'm looking for. This is the record set I'm looking for. These are the sites where I think they are. And then I sort of sign up for the emails, email alerts from that, that vendor. Uh, I know that can be a pain to be bombarded with them. Some people will create what I call a burn email address. That is, you set up a separate Gmail or Outlook account, and you use that only for signing up for genealogy deals and e-news. The burden is that you have to remember to check it. Uh, and I will show you how to stay in the loop with these companies. Uh, on social media, Facebook, as much as I hate Facebook, it's a lot easier to do that. You don't want to miss that offer. Very often, the free access is only a couple of days, maybe a week. And then if you were to go back after that, you won't get the access to the images. So it's important that you save those record images to your computer or a flash drive or something like that. Uh, the second one is uh, cycle on and cycle off. Uh, several vendors like Genealogy Bank. Uh, if someone could mute themselves, please. I think we have some noise back there. Uh, so Genealogy Bank has a monthly subscription. It's not very cost effective, but for me, if I'm not using it all the time, what I might want to do is uh, go ahead and buy a month and then cancel it. Usually it renews automatically. Another one is Ancestry. Ancestry has a six month membership offer. They just had one earlier this month. It was 50% off. Uh, and so I bought those. And then maybe in March, when it comes due, I'll call up Ancestry about a week or two before and decide to cancel. So this is how it works. If you want to cycle off, I would urge you to get on the telephone. Don't email them. Don't use chat or message on Facebook. Get on the phone. Uh, and then you can arrange for that. The important thing is too, if you decide to cycle back on, let's say you're up here in Chicago for the summer, then you're gonna to go to Palm Springs and that's where you do your genealogy. So come October, you wanna cycle on call them again. Uh, you may be tempted to sign up for an offer that you see, but this is a problem. On Ancestry especially, you'll set up that offer with a new login and you want to have your old login. You want to have your login that had your DNA results, that had your family tree. Uh, also, don't be surprised that if you say you want to take a break, they uh, will pull out a page from their marketing binder and try and convince you to stay with ancestry, et cetera. We'll talk about that in a minute. So cycle on and cycle off is a great way. If you're not using it all year, uh, consider that. Uh, so I'd rather do one or two months of genealogy bank. Uh, and then rather than the whole shebang for, uh, you know, I don't know what the price is now. So this is, uh, this is my mother's New York City side. My mother was born in New York City one of 12 kids during the depression. I don't know how my grandparents did it. I have 41 first cousins on my mother's side, uh, but my mother was a shopper. Uh, so she was not shy about asking for a discount uh, and not haggling per se, but my mother's rule was, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So what you do, let's say that you're getting to your renewal date for a site like Ancestry and please, set a reminder on a calendar, set a reminder about two weeks. Believe it or not, Ancestry sends out an email a month before your renewal. I know, because I just got one. But sometimes that email winds up in junk or spam and you don't see it. So you need to take it upon yourself to somehow remind you, remind yourself, oh, it's two weeks until I uh, renew. And very often, like this 50% off deal for six months. Uh, yeah, you renew at the full price and it's not pretty. 
And then once it does renew, usually the company will not let you uh, cancel that or get your money back. Some companies are stricter than others. So what I do is I get on the phone again and I say, I'm not sure I want to renew my ancestry when it comes up in two weeks for renewal. And they take page seven or whatever out of the marketing binder and they have that week's offers. I've had colleagues get ancestry for 60% off for a world explorer full year. Uh, it depends on the time of year. Uh, right now, I would say next week is the ideal time. It's the end of the third quarter. Uh, companies want to boost their numbers. Plus, have you ever heard about the churn, C-H-U-R-N? The churn basically for all these subscription services, they look at the percentage of people that don't renew and they want to keep that percentage low. And here's why. Uh, I've talked to Ancestry on their basic $100, $150 annual, I think, US uh, package. They spend $75 to market and recruit new members. So think about it. If you leave Ancestry, after 90 days, you're treated as a new member and they're going to spend that money. So to recruit you, to bring you back. So it makes sense that they're going to offer a good discount if you call them up and say, hey, I really want to stay, but I can't afford it, et cetera. So, and again, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. The worst they can say is, no, we don't have any deals. But anytime colleagues have called, they've gotten a variety of deals. They tend to say that the end of the quarter, that last week, is probably the best time because Ancestry and other companies already have their numbers. They know how they're doing. Uh, and so they sometimes want that little push. Uh, leverage coupon websites. I don't know if you use sites like Retail Me Not. So what it is, there's a lot of promo codes out there and they're promo codes for genealogy companies. I'm not gonna click this link. I'm gonna actually go out to the internet and I'm gonna say Retail Me Not, there it is. And it works with anything. Uh, I use it all the time. What you have to get in the habit of doing is you have to look for this promo code before you make the purchase. Uh, you can't, it's not very often that you can convince Ancestry. Oh, I forgot to put in the promo code. Uh, so usually after the deal is done, you won't get a discount. Uh, what I do is I don't search for the word genealogy. Uh, what I do is I search for things like ancestry.com. There are 12 codes here. And of course I get tens of pop-ups. Uh, so the thing is, some of them, uh, I don't know if they're actually true or not. This does not make this does not make sense to me. I've never heard of this. So a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll downvote it, uh, and just you know that way it's pulled. Uh, but yeah, this is a standard. Uh, this is pretty new, uh, and so they may have the six month membership offer running again. I'll have to check. Uh, and so you click the get deal. And sometimes they'll give you the coupon code or they will take you right to the site. So it's worth it to do this for MyHeritage. Uh, you could probably do a DNA and see what you get. Uh, MyHeritage uh, and so things like that. So a living DNA, uh, then there's all these other ones as well. But check out those sites. Another one is Coupon Cabin. I put links to those sites in the handout, uh, but you have to remember to do this uh, before you actually make the purchase. Uh, this is a somewhat difficult concept, so stick with me. Uh, Dick Eastman has posted about this for many years. There is such a thing as a virtual credit card number. It is tied to your credit card, okay? I, I have credit cards at Chase, uh, and I have a credit card, a physical one. But what I can do is I can contact Chase, sometimes just do it myself online, and say that I want a virtual credit card number for shopping. What does that do? Well, many of these are one-time use only. Uh, why do credit card companies and banks offer them? To combat fraud. Uh, credit card fraud is rampant. Uh, and basically, they issue you a number and the expiration everything. And it's tied to your card, but you can only use it once. 
So someone can't steal it. Uh, they can't hack the database for that vendor and steal it. So do you know where I'm going with this? How can a company like Ancestry renew your subscription if the payment method you have is a virtual credit card that doesn't renew? It's, it's a one-time only. Kind of a tricky situation. Uh, I think when Dick Eastman wrote about it a few years ago, I was amazed. I thought, this is so smart. Uh, so it depends on where you have your credit card, uh, credit union bank. The best thing is to contact them and say, do you have virtual credit card numbers? Uh, do you provide this to your cardholders? They may call it something else, but explain to them what you're trying to do. I have used them before and uh, Genealogy Bank and other companies, and that's it. It just did not renew. That monthly subscription, I wanted one month, used a virtual credit card number, just didn't renew. When it should have renewed, because normally you would put in a regular credit card as a payment method, and it sits there with them. So I hope that concept wasn't too difficult. Sometimes it can be difficult to explain. <clears throat> I know Nancy's gonna love me for this. Access your local library. Uh, a library card is, it's amazing in terms of what it's worth. Uh, I've had mine here in Chicago, Chicago Public Library ever since I moved here in 2014. Uh, you may know that Ancestry, MyHeritage, Full3, newspapers.com, a lot of the vendors, they have a library edition of their program. Now, the benefit during COVID, we're in a situation where, let me say, normally you would have to go to the library physically, sit at a computer, and then you would have access to Ancestry Library Edition. There was no way to get it at home. But during the pandemic, a lot of companies realized, oh, this isn't going to work. So they basically allowed users with a valid library card to access Ancestry and other programs from home. Actually, the Ancestry deal is now still running through December 31st. Uh, so a lot of people will say, hey, I'm not going to renew my subscription. I'll just go and log in. Let me show you how it works for uh, CPL here. And here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do mm, Chicago Public Library uh, Ancestry. There we go. Uh, I'll go ahead and it will show the genealogy resources. Uh, there it is. Also, see, uh, with the library card, I get full access to Chicago Tribune Historical Archive. Here it is. Okay. And what's going to happen is I will be asked to log in um, with my credit. Every library is different. My credit card and my PIN number. And I go ahead and log in. And then what I get, this is what the library edition looks like. I get full access to almost all the record sets. Let me put a proviso there. Some record sets are licensed in such a way that uh, the license specifies that you cannot access them from home, that you physically have to be at the library. I think there are about 80 record sets on Ancestry. It doesn't cover a lot, nothing major, uh, but you can get almost every record. You can save them to your computer. What you can do you won't have access to your DNA results. You will not have access to your family tree. And that makes sense because you're really not logged in as yourself. You're logged in as a library patron. And it's used mostly just for researching and saving records, et cetera. So that's a nice way to save money. Uh, I don't know what the future will bring for that. Just so you know, let me see if I can find it at uh, CPL. I think they also have full three. Uh, they have a lot of different things. And let me go to hit, go ahead to uh, Chicago Public Library, Ancestry again. Let me go to Genealogy Resources. Uh, and the other ones are, uh, here we go, Heritage Quest. Heritage Quest has a lot of census. Uh, here, I have a newspapers.com Illinois collection. So they pulled 180 different ones. Uh, you hear there are a lot more here. Uh, also, what I urge people to do, if your library does not have Ancestry Library Edition or Fold 3 or any of those, go ahead and ask. Uh, say, uh, is, can we get a subscription for that? Most libraries will look at their budget, they'll look at how many people would possibly use it, 
and they could add it. Uh, I know that my heritage, the library edition is really good. So don't forget that your local library is your friend. And then number seven, stay alert and be alerted. This is an old page from the My Heritage blog. But if you look up here, very often there's a sign up link, or lately there's a pop up. And it will say, uh, sign up for e news. Sometimes they'll give you a 10% or 15% coupon. Uh, basically, they want you on their mailing list. That means that they can then send messages, text messages, whatever you sign up for. So, excuse me, this is really how you stay in the loop. The other thing would, would be to read blogs like Dick Eastman's online genealogical newsletter, sign up for my e-newsletter uh, and things like that. But you have to go out sometimes and look for these deals. The easiest way is to sign up with these vendors and say, you know, I'll be notified. You'd be notified when there's a free access period. Uh, sometimes if you are signed up, you will get early notice on a sale. And so go out and do that. Do that for Ancestry. Uh, if you already have an Ancestry account, you're signed up, believe me, believe it or not. Number eight, abandon your shopping cart. Hard to believe. I didn't believe this would work. This applies not just to genealogy, but to any vendor. This is what it is. You have to have an account at that place, even a free account. And then you log in, you shop, you find what you want to buy, leave it in the cart and log off. And then wait maybe up to 24 hours. You will usually either get a reminder, oh, you left something in your cart, or better yet, you'll get an offer. Right now, my heritage gives free shipping if you buy two or more kits, that's $12.95 each. But guess what? If you leave a DNA, DNA kit in your cart for a few hours, they will email you and they will offer free shipping. So why did they do this? It all comes down again to marketing dollars. But think about it. You were 90% there to the sale. You shop for the item. You put it in your cart. Maybe you got interrupted. Uh, maybe the computer went down. Maybe you're not sure. So they want to offer that little incentive to bump you into the area of buying that item. Uh, it works for me at Nordstrom's online, any of the, any of the shopping stores. Uh, and so I urge you to do this. Does it work for Amazon? Uh, they're a little bit too big. Uh, but I, my heritage is one of the best ones. If you're looking for DNA, it's a way to get free shipping. So I don't know if you tried this before, but I was amazed. I never believed it. The key is, folks, you need to have a free account. You need to have some way for them to notify you that, oh, you left this in the cart. Uh, another difficult concept. I know you're all swimming in gift cards, I'm sure. But a few years ago, I received uh, Visa gift cards for my 50th birthday. And the problem with these gift cards is this. Uh, it's a use it or lose it. There's usually an expiration date. And if you don't use what's on the card, that's it, it's gone. Uh, the other thing is I will use a card and very often have like $4 and three cents left on the card. I'm like, oh great, what am I gonna buy? Uh, so let's say, I'm gonna go over here and see if this works. Uh, it does, wow. Uh, so let's say, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, here we are at Amazon. Let's say my Aunt Polly gets me a $100 Visa card uh, for my birthday. Thank you, Aunt Polly. Uh, I know what happens. I tend to put it in the desk. I forget about it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take that value and convert it to Amazon credit. Why? Amazon credit never expires. So what you do is you go ahead and you buy yourself an e-gift card. And you pick whatever you want. I'm going to pick $100. Uh, you have to put in your email address and like that. And then here, in the message, I usually say, uh, why are you doing this? So I say uh, converting uh, Aunt Polly's. Uh, birthday gift 
can't spell very well, a $100 uh, Visa card. Great. And then you can actually say you want to send it up to a year from now. I send it now. Add it to your cart. I wonder if I have anything weird in my cart. No, I only have one. And this is where you need to pay attention. You're not going to use any of your existing credit cards, right? That wouldn't make sense. You're going to come down here and enlarge this. You're going to add a new credit card and guess which one you're going to use? That card number from the Visa card that Ann Polly gave you. Uh, the name of the card doesn't matter because there won't be a name. And then you do this. Do not set it as your default. Okay. And then go ahead and add that card. Use that to buy the $100. And what will happen? You get an email saying Thomas McKenty has sent you a gift. And then it just goes on your Amazon account. And anytime you want to use it, that's it. It's there. That's the purpose is you want to take something that uh, has an expiration date. And that's how the companies make money. They count on a certain percentage of those cards never fully being redeemed. I think it's a pretty smart way to do it. Uh, again, I don't know who came up with this. This may have been another article of Dick Eastman. But I thought it was pretty ingenious. Uh, I know you're all swimming in Visa gift cards, I'm sure. Don't be afraid to cancel. I'm not sure if you remember a few years ago, uh, mobile phone companies, uh, cable companies. I would play them off against each other. I'd have AT&T for cable, and then Verizon would make a crazy offer. And so I would call up AT&T and say, I think I'm going to switch over to Verizon. Uh, they have this offer, and guess what? Page number seven comes out of the marketing binder. Remember, you're a current customer. They want to retain you. Uh, and so that's what I do. So I will call Ancestry and say, you know, I'm thinking of canceling uh, my subscription before it renews on September 30th, and they will make an offer. So it's good to do this by phone again. And also, when you're, you don't want to do it the last day before you renew. I'm going to do it about two weeks from your renewal date and then talk to them uh, on the telephone. Somewhat of a difficult uh, concept here is affiliate marketing. Now, not too many libraries do this, but a lot of genealogy societies do it and individuals can do it too. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't know what affiliate marketing is, basically you can sign up to carry uh, links or ads to Ancestry products. And if you're approved, you can make 10 to 30% of the sale. It does work. I know because 70% of my income is from uh, affiliate marketing. Uh, why do they do this? Well, rather than run a banner ad on like CNN, they know that you know genealogists. You have an in on the market. They know that if you're putting this on your blog or sending the link out to genealogy society members, that's a known audience and they're into genealogy or DNA, et cetera. So that's what the incentive is. Uh, when I say that I make 10 to 30%, it doesn't mean that the person buying the item pays more. You can still get a good uh, sell price. Here's an example. This is from yeah, last November, Black Friday. Uh, and they were offering this. Uh, basically, the test went from $99 to $59. Uh, also, you could get uh, Ancestry gift subscriptions. Uh, so for every DNA test, even at $59, I made 10%, $5.90 on a subscription. Like a world subscription, a $300, $300 one, I made 30%. I'm making $90. Uh, and again, it may seem a lot, but the whole goal is to get someone on board. Then you're going to auto renew them. Then you're going to market to them, et cetera. They have to come into that bubble. Uh, so an example of a genealogy society, let me see if I can do this. Uh, Southern California Genealogical Society. Uh, I am actually a far-flung member. But look at their site. Uh, right here, I'm going to enlarge this. Oh, look at this. They have a link to Family Tree DNA. If they can get their members to use this link, 
the society makes 10 percent on anything that is sold that they purchase uh amazon does have amazon associates uh so i make i think up to four percent of any purchase in fact and so basically the society tells its members every month in a newsletter don't forget to use our links uh, to go ahead and do your online shopping it doesn't increase the price you pay and it gives a little cha-ching kickback uh to the person uh and so uh i just said to go somewhere here uh oh yeah i think i know oh amazon and so amazon does have a program uh, where you can actually post Amazon links. Uh, and so far this month on this, I've made $118. Uh, I know my friends laughed at me when I said, oh, I made $30 on Amazon, uh, set, you know, posting links. And they laughed, $30. I said, you didn't laugh now. By the end of the year, that's $360. That covers a World Explorer uh, subscription for Ancestry. Uh, the other thing is, and not to show off, but if you want to get serious about this, uh, under the affiliate program for Amazon, uh, this month so far, I've sold $8,900 worth of product and I've made $2,600. And we're here at what, the 22nd of the month. Uh, this is not a typical for me. This is because Ancestry had a big membership sale. But uh -huh. this is, hello, can you mute yourself, please? Would you hit mute, please? talking to you hello yeah can you mute this is the middle of a webinar and we're trying to present you need to mute yourself please thank you uh and so what it is is this allows me to do a lot of free webinars to uh keep a reasonable price on my webinars and also uh it allows me to do a lot of free cheat sheets that's part of my business model is i'd rather give that information away and maybe occasionally you'll click on a link. So it can get very complicated as a business. I've been doing it for 10 years, but I wanna let you know that you can actually do this personally as a business. Societies, uh, nonprofits are allowed to join these programs. No one says that you can't make a profit. I think with nonprofits, you can't distribute those profits to like members, board members, et cetera. So you can earn money and then it goes towards programs and events. Uh, avoid those impulse decisions. You know, it's two in the morning. You found a great German church record book on Amazon. It's out of print. Someone has it for sale for like $50. And you're like, oh, I need that book. Do you need it really at two in the morning? Uh, it's a paperback book. You're not going to get it for how many days? Also, did you look up and see if it's available on Google Books? Uh, is it out of print? Is it just out of copyright? I see these situations. It's just like being in the grocery store with all the candy and the gum at the checkout. Uh, the thing is, you have to look at that and avoid that. Uh, you see those things. I call them bright and shiny objects. Just let it wait till the morning. Uh, maybe the desire to have that book will not be as great. Uh, and that's really vital to saving money. Uh, they make it so easy now to make purchases, especially Amazon. They have this whole one click thing. You just click once and boom, they charge your credit card. They have your mailing address and boom, that's it. Uh, so you want to be careful with that. Uh, I'm not sure that this is going to apply so much. We're not back to in-person conferences yet. But Roots Tech and many of them would have early bird pricing. Uh, you always want to take advantage, even some virtual conferences now. Uh, I'm doing one for Eastern Washington Genealogical Society on October 2nd, and they had an early bird price uh, to do that. So the other thing is a few of the conferences, I think FGS, NGS, if you volunteered with them, they would give you a discount on your registration. I think if you volunteered eight hours, you got 25% off. And what is volunteering? It's not heavy work. Uh, and giving people directions, uh, being a, a class monitor, introducing a speaker. It still gives you time to go to other uh, you know, events, lectures at the conference, uh, but it allows them to tap into volunteers. This is worth the price of admission, folks. Did you know? 
that with an AARP membership, a valid one, you can save 30% on Ancestry. Yes. Uh, you have to actually call the number. Search for this. There's a link in the handout. There are some uh, restrictions. This is a one-time only deal. You cannot use this every year. Uh, this is a contract that was negotiated with AARP and Ancestry. And uh, they renew it every year. It's been going on for eight years now. But the thing is, once you use this, and it is for the world explorer, that's the limit. Then the next year, you're going to renew it full price. So you're going to set your reminder, call up Ancestry, and get the latest deal, maybe downgrade to US. Uh, but this say, actually saves money. Uh, the key is, if you have six months sitting still on a membership, don't do it now. Uh, do it as you get closer to your renewal date. Uh, I wouldn't do it. I would only do it if I made, maybe had a month or less left on my membership. And again, it's a call. Uh, and they will handle it for you. And uh, people do this. Genealogists do this all the time. It's one of those little known secrets that you really don't see. You won't see advertisements for it. Uh, a lot of it is by word of mouth. Uh, but you, all you have to do is search AARP Ancestry, and you'll get this splash screen and with the information that you need. This one, uh, you might laugh at it, but a lot of new genealogists, what they do is when they order vital records from a state or a local health department, uh, they will buy the certified version, which is always more expensive. I asked some woman, she said, well, I'm applying to DAR or a lineage society, and I figured that's what they needed. The only time you really need a certified death certificate or any of those records is if you're handling legal matters. When my mom passed six years ago, Funeral Home allowed me to get as many certified death certificates as I could for $10 each, and that was great. Uh, and so I would need them to close accounts, et cetera. You don't need that. Some sites will say, get the genealogy version or the non-certified version. Sometimes the difference can be $6 for non-certified and $30 for certified. So that's a way to save money. Okay, there are a few bonus habits. I feel like Ron Popeil selling Ginzu knives, but wait, there's more. Uh, check for society discounts. Uh, I belong to the Association of Professional Genealogists. It is not a cheap membership. It's $120 a year. It's professional. But they have exclusive uh, discounts. One year, they allow you to get full access to find my past for a year if you join the society. I mean, hey, that was worth what? I don't know, 79 bucks in itself. Uh, Southern California Genealogical Society. Join them, $30. I don't do any research there. But you know why? They had free access at home to newspaperarchive.com. They had negotiated this deal with the vendor, but it was for their members only. So go ahead and look for that. Uh, go ahead and search for Genealogy Society and, and uh, benefits, and then maybe put in full three or whatever. It can be a very efficient way to save money on these products that you would normally pay full price for. And then a little bit of uh, uh, self-promotion. I've been running Genealogy Bargains as a site for, oh, got it, I would say at least uh, six years. Uh, what it is, is every day I go out, I don't know if this is still valid. Uh, yeah, uh, right now, uh, the National Institute of Genealogical Studies, uh, they're offering 79% off their courses, a set amount of courses through Groupon. Uh, instead of paying $89, you pay $18. And guess what? I make money off of this, full disclosure. Uh, but the thing is, I go out and I search for these deals every morning. Uh, I look at various resources. Besides that, you'll want to check out my free genealogy section because I have over 33 free genealogy cheat sheets. Uh, these are yours to download and print. They're always two-sided. I have uh, colleagues that will put them into page protectors and a binder. A lot of libraries print these out, and that's fine with me. Uh, so that's what I look for. I look for this balance of doing a little bit of sales, but also giving away as much free stuff as I can. So let's finish up with a few things. I want you to be frugal 
but not foolish. What's foolish? Uh, sharing your login credentials. We had one woman a few years ago boasted that she bought a World Explorer and then sent the login password to like 25 different relatives. Not gonna work. Uh, most of these companies monitor how many active logins there are. Now you don't have to worry if you are logged in at home, maybe you're logged in on your mobile device, a laptop and at work, they're not gonna bother with that. They're looking for major abuses of this. Uh, and so avoid that. The, what happened is a woman, she lost her money, they did not refund it and they terminated her and they also banned her from ancestry. Uh, so you never wanna do that. Uh, so that's not a smart idea. Always read the terms of service before you buy. Uh, caveat enter. I know we all do that before we check that box, right? What's important is, especially on these sites like Ancestry, it controls basically what they can do with the information you upload. Uh, think about it. What if Ancestry gave you a 90 day notice that they were going out of business? Would you know how to back up your family tree? You can export, export it to JetCom. But did you know that doesn't cover all the photos you uploaded? So I always make sure I read the TOS. If there's an update, I'm signed up for it. And then I also always have an exit strategy. So if I want to leave a company, I know what I have to take with me and how to download that. And finally, don't try the multiple free accounts. Uh, my heritage has, you know, free for 14 days. Uh, I had one person try and sign up for a new one every 14 days. Different email address, but that's not how it works. The companies follow your IP address, which is your internet protocol address. So they can identify that, you know, those last 10 uh, email accounts were from the same IP address and that's it. Uh, they'll probably ban you. Uh, it's just not worth it. Uh, also, it can get confusing if you do have multiple accounts. You have certain records on that account, certain records on that account, and it's going to be a nightmare. Yay, Q&A time, but uh, this is my email address, idefgen at gmail.com. I will put this in the chat uh, in a minute, but if you need to email me uh, concerning this topic, you go ahead and do that. I realize that questions don't come to you right away. Uh, you will have to give me about 48 hours to respond. I usually average three to 400 emails a day and run triage every morning. So I'm going to go and do that. Uh, Nancy, how was the presentation? You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah. Hey, Sorry. how was that? That was very good. Very good. Yeah. I, I actually have a question about the AARP. Okay, um, sure. Yeah. So yeah, you said you can only use it once, one, one time, time only. And yes. And you have to have a valid ARP uh, membership. They will look it up yep. and you have to have that already. But then you can't use it again. Uh, I guess you could use it again. No, you can't even under an email because it would be the same ARP account number. So people oh, have right. said that it's a one time only use. Yeah. So, so it could be 30% of, of the it, it is it is 30 percent of the world explorer that's all the offer is for it's oh, okay. not 30 it's a, that's it okay. uh, and in a way it gives people a lot of people have the u.s version so basically they're getting the world version for almost the same price they would pay the u.s annual uh so it's a way to upgrade and you see that's their marketing ploy you're going to enjoy world explorer so much you're going to renew it uh the following year you know there's no such thing as a free lunch so yeah <laughs> Any other questions? I should mention, uh, Thomas, that yes. the uh, Rochester Genealogy Society took your uh, some of your 10 smarter search strategies and 10 ways oh, yeah. to do this, that, and other thing, and they're in our file section on the RGS. The, the cheat sheet, I'm honored cheat by sheet, that. Yeah. I, I'm honored by that. That's what it's for. Like I said, I'm a steward for this information. I can't take it with me, uh, and I'd rather have it disseminated. It has my logo and my site, my website, so I know people will eventually come back and make a purchase. So, yeah, thank you, though. Well, thank you. Sure. I like that idea about the libraries doing the cheat sheets. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I have libraries that print out all of them on cardstock 
uh, two sided, and they make them available to their patrons. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I so appreciate that you uh, want to share your knowledge. Uh, you my, know, I, it's, you my abund- it's my abundance model. My mother raised me this way. She said, how can you hold on to what you have with a tight fist? You have to let it go, have your palm up to accept the next good thing coming your way. Uh-huh. And that's it. That's, yeah. that's, that's how I live every day. That's awesome. And, uh, and, and it does come back to you tenfold. It really does. Mm-hmm. So I, I think some people are so protective of their ancestors. It's like an ownership issue and family photos. I don't care if you use my family photos. Uh, the thing is I can't take them with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's the whole idea. No, we are stewards for this information. We've got to pass it on sometime. That's so, right. Yeah. Very good point. Any other questions? Is there anything in the chat or not? I didn't see any questions. Guess I've stunned everyone into silence. That's what I've done, yeah. A lot so. of uh, very positive comments, though, and I will save the chat and send that out to you. Good, um, good, yeah. Send that to everybody. Yeah, uh, this, uh, this is one of my most popular presentations. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to save money doing this. It can get to be a very expensive hobby. It really can, so, yeah. And, and we don't know what we don't know. So having well, you. Right, exactly. Office. Yeah, thank you. And uh, so, yeah, I appreciate it. If there's nothing else, I'm going to take my leave and finish dinner. And uh, oh. yeah, what else? Oh, sorry. Lori has a question. Sure. She used the cue at the beginning, too. I love it. Uh, I see a German cheat sheet. Is there an Irish one? There's not an Irish one yet. There probably will be come March of next year. But I think October is German American Heritage Month. And there was someone had said, uh, so I'm working on that. Uh, But yeah, I also take suggestions for cheat sheets. Just email me and say, hey, so yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Yep. Uh, Uh, Deborah? Yeah. Canadian cheat sheet. Oh, which one? Canada. Uh, There's not one for Canada yet either. That's on my list. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. And thanks, everybody, for coming in and watching tonight. Um, I will be sending out a follow up email with uh, the link for the video and uh, the save chat I'm going to do and any other information. probably tell you a little bit about what's going to happen next month. So be on the lookout for that probably early next week. And with that, I think I'm going to say good night too, unless anybody has any questions about Rhonda Coit Library or. (laughs) All right. Thank you all again for coming. Appreciate seeing your faces and hearing your voices. It's, It's always good to know this is a popular Uh, program. So have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you.